I don't know about you guys, but I have been feeling so uncreative lately, and it seems like everywhere I look on social media, my friends are starting all these amazing new creative projects, and I just don't have the energy for it. We're going through such a strange and difficult time right now. A lot of us don't have access to even really basic things from our usual daily lives, plus we're all feeling a lot of anxiety. So I feel like the pressure on top of that, of coming up with really great creative ideas to cheer us up, just feels too much. So, in this book break video, I've come up with a list of the things that I have really enjoyed doing, that don't take too much creative brain power, that don't have any added pressure, but have just made me feel really on top of things, and hopefully will kickstart some motivation in the end, and I would love to hear your guys' suggestions for other activities like this. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is actually an exercise in being kind to yourself. And I got this idea from the book The Kindness Method by Sharu Azadi. I did a whole video with her last year, which I will link to. She was absolutely wonderful. And she explains that her book The Kindness Method is about helping yourself take up new habits in your life, but by being kind to yourself the whole way along. It's not about guilting yourself or shaming yourself that you haven't achieved these things. So right now, that is perfect for me. And the particular exercise that's been really helping me has been the mind maps. So in the book, Sharu Azadi gets you to draw out these mind maps full of things that you like about yourself and things that you're proud of. And I found right now that no matter what I'm achieving or not achieving, just taking some time in my day to work on these mind maps has just been this really lovely practice in being kind to myself and bringing my anxiety levels down. Now the second activity I want to suggest is, stay with me, tidying. I know, I always found tidying to be such a chore, but right now I am finding it really soothing, particularly if you focus on one particular area at a time. So it might be your bookshelves one day, or your wardrobe the next. And you can turn it into this whole activity that's really about spending time with your things and reminding yourself of the lovely things that you own. I was inspired to do this from reading the life-changing manga of Tidying Up, which is a Marie Kondo graphic novel about a young woman who tidies up her flat and her life. And it's great! And I was a little bit cynical about the idea that tidying could ever really spark joy, but it really does. I've been really enjoying it. And the best thing is, you can just keep redoing it. So with my bookshelves, today I organised them by alphabetical order, but tomorrow I could redo it by genre or by colour. And while we're on a Marie Kondo kick, I also read her book Joy at Work, which inspired my third suggestion, set up a really nice workspace for yourself. Whether that's for doing creative work, or just for browsing social media for three hours, no judgement either way, you still deserve a really nice place to sit, where you're not going to be getting neck ache, and where you can feel calm and at peace during what's a really stressful time in our lives. So Marie Kondo says that the ideal workspace should make your heart leap, and a lot of the places I've been working recently have not been doing that. So I've been experimenting around my room with finding the perfect places to sit when I'm on my laptop, editing a video, or just looking at social media, and I found that what's most important to me is having somewhere where my laptop can be elevated and my feet can be firmly on the ground, because that way my body feels comfortable while I'm at work. But for you, it might be that the most important thing is having a surface nearby for your cup of tea, or being able to look over at your plants while you're working. Whatever it is, you deserve somewhere that makes you feel peaceful. And once you've set up your ideal workspace, you can then do my fourth suggestion, which is bullet journaling. So, for bullet journaling, do not feel you have to compare yourself to the amazing people on Instagram who draw up these fantastically beautiful bullet journals. I'm not artistic at all and I get really frustrated if I try and make mine look really pretty with washi tape and glitter and felt pens. Bullet journaling itself is just an organisational technique. So you can look at books like the 365 Bullet Guide for inspiration on how it works. I just find it's a really useful way of organising the tasks that I need to do in a day, or I found it a really lovely way to keep track of things, like rating the new films I've watched recently, or keeping a little diary of nice phone calls I've had with friends. Tip number five is quite a broad one. This is just to do a hobby that you already know how to do and you already know you enjoy. So for example, I'm not a particularly great cook, so I am not gonna be learning how to make banana bread right now, like it seems everybody else is, but I do know I love following a recipe. I find it really soothing and methodical. I like that I can listen to an audiobook while I'm doing it. So I have been enjoying taking some time in my day to follow some recipes. I've been really liking Jack Monroe's book, Tin Can Cook, which has recipes made from tinned food 
food if you're able to source canned food. And Jack Monroe gives really easy to follow instructions for turning this into delicious stews and curries, which then leads to my second favorite hobby, eating. But for you, this could be absolutely anything. Maybe it might be practicing braiding your hair or drawing on your winged eyeliner or sketching your plants. The results don't matter right now. It's just about taking some time for something that you know you enjoy. Tip number six is to get moving. Do some exercise that you already enjoy. You don't have to take up some brand new high intensity workouts right now or force yourself to do yoga even though you know you find it boring. But we know from the almighty L Woods, endorphins do make you happy. And so getting your body moving in some way can only cheer you up. And people like Joe Wicks are bringing us free online classes at the moment, which is so helpful. So Joe Wicks is doing these daily YouTube videos and raising money for the NHS at the same time, which is brilliant. And finally, tip number seven is to help somebody else with their creative project. So this one always works a treat for me. It's a really great way to get me trying out new creative activities, but without any of the pressure. So for example, if if you're trying to entertain children at the moment, the Joy Journal by Laura Brand is full of really great ideas. A lot of them use things that you probably already have in your kitchen cupboards. And you'll find that A, it's a really nice way of bonding with children, and B, you'll probably enjoy a lot of these activities a lot yourself too. But it could be anything. It could be phoning up that friend who you know is writing a book and asking if they need somebody to bounce ideas around with, or maybe they need a proofreader. I've been helping my dad set up his own YouTube channel, which has definitely been keeping me busy and been really fun. So I would love to know what soothing activities you guys have been finding helpful when you've been feeling overwhelmed or when you're just not in the mood for a big project. And we also do have a whole guide to life playlist, which is full of videos about reducing stress and anxiety and also other activities you might like to try. So do have a browse, do that one, and we'll see you next time.